So you've connected up the DS411 Slim to both the network and the power. You've popped in at least one hard drive and you've switched it on and waited for it to make all of its noises and beeps and whirs. Next thing you need to do is to install the software. So you pop the CD into your computer and the Synology screen will pop up giving you the option to look at the installation guide here uh, the user's guide and then obviously you can pick which of the models you've got in our case it's the DS411 Slim uh, you've got Synology Assistant, Data Replicator 3 and you can download the redirector or obviously you can browse the CD or exit if you wish in our case we're going to click the start button uh, and it tells us it's going to be the Synology Assistant is going to be installed on the computer um, so here we go let's install it one thing that's popped up for me is that on my Windows 7 machine the Windows firewalls popped up to tell me that it's blocked some features in this case the DS Assistant uh, I'm going to allow access because I do know what this is and I do want it so I click the allow access button and as you can see now the Synology Assistant has popped up let's make that slightly bigger so we can actually see it and here you go as you can see it's the disk station it's the IP address it's telling me it's not yet installed the MAC address of the machine version number of the software serial number and model number so let's select this station and let's click the install button right so as you can see the Synology Assistant setup wizard has appeared and it's telling me that uh, it hasn't installed yet and it will actually install the disk station manager for me and it will complete the configuration it's also warning me that uh, any data on my hard drives will be deleted this is obviously standard um, so uh, let's choose the installation path so in our case it's the 411 slim so we select it it's now selected uh, we can choose between quick setup and complete setup so let's just go for quick setup for now and click next it's just confirming everything here for us and we click finish if we're happy as you can see it's now working through and we're not having to do anything it's applied the network settings it's now formatting the drive uh, it's telling us it might take 10 minutes and we should wait patiently if we have a look down there it's all the information we've seen already uh, and it's telling us that it's currently formatting the drive or in this case the system partition so uh, rather than sit here and wait 10 minutes and make you guys watch the video I'm just going to pause it here for a second and we'll come back when it gets past this stage right we've actually got an error according to the system it tells me the hard drive hasn't been detected and it's asking me to check the hard drive is well connected to the mother to the motherboard so I'm going to check everything is connected and we'll come back in a second so now we start the quick setup mode by clicking next and we can just check the configurations are correct so we've chosen the correct installation file make sure you do because if you choose the wrong one obviously it's not going to work uh, server name etc is there and we click finish and again now we wait while it's doing everything in this case it's formatting the system partition and as you can see that's formatting relatively quickly for the drive that I've got in there but it's actually a small drive that I've got in there so again be patient when you're doing this because obviously the size of your drive is going to affect it so we'll just wait a few more seconds while that's finishing and we'll come back in a moment when it's completed right and here we are at 99 percent of the system partition being formatted now it's actually installing the disk station manager software to our hard drive and again we will wait and come back in a few moments when that is done now that's done the next step is for the system to reboot and as you can see it's currently counting down from about 580 something seconds so again don't worry I'm not going to make you sit through all this we'll come back when we're actually at the next step now it's basically writing all of the configuration to the drive you can hear lots of whirring of the hard drive in the DS 
411 Slim and the occasional beep while it's doing something. Again, won't make you sit through the whole of the writing of the configuration, we'll come back in a moment. We're now told that the system's successfully installed, which is always a good thing, and the setup is complete, and that we can now log into the server via the Synology Assistant, so let's give that a go. So now we can close this, and we're back to the Synology Assistant, and as you see, we now show it saying ready, whereas before it wasn't. So now we can click that, click connect, and it pops up with the disk station login. So here we put in the username and password. As we've actually not set a password yet, the account is admin and the password is currently blank. Always worth checking the manuals on these devices because often there is a, an admin account and a password set up and a few times I've heard people sort of say that it doesn't work, it must have been pre-configured, they don't know what the password is. So do check um, and let's click here and log in. And it tells it's processing and loading. So here we see the quick start menu so we can choose to set up a volume and create a shared folder, create a user, access files, discover more applications. So I think in our case um, let's set up a new volume and create a shared folder so again it's good here it's got lots of information it tells you what you need to do um, so it tells us to launch the storage manager and click create so let's launch the storage manager and the first thing it does is ask us to choose a mode so whether we want to use the Synology hybrid raid mode which as it says will optimize the storage allocation based on the number of installed disks um, or we can do custom. Now in my case I've only got a single disk in at the moment so let, let's stick with the default mode which is SHR. Choose the disk as I said I, it was a quite a small disk so it's 150 gig disk. It tells me that all the data is going to be erased. Yeah thanks for reminding me. And it's asking us if we'd like to uh, perform a system check. Um, this is going to take longer, but uh, it's probably worth doing because you're going to check whether or not there are any problems and it's best to know now than later on. So again, leave that as default and click next. Um, and it's just again, just telling me what the settings are and what it's going to do and asking me to apply, which is what we're doing. So right now it's actually uh, checking the disk for us. As you can see there, it's 1.74%. Uh, so even with a small disk like the one I'm using, the 150 gig drive, it's going to take a few minutes. So again, I'm going to pause the recording here just so you guys don't have to sit through all of it. You'll thank me later. It's a few minutes later and as you can see we're only up to 7.65% so I wasn't kidding when I said you'd thank me later. Back in a bit. So here we are, we're at 99.35% um, and it's been about an hour, hour and a half while it's been checking the disk so it has been a long drawn out process but obviously worth doing because you want to make sure that the disks are okay. So we're now just waiting for that last few moments and we should be okay. And there we go, 100%. Now it's just creating the file system and that should be a pretty quick job. So we'll come back in a moment. Now it's activating the volume, and again, shouldn't take very long. But again, remember that the larger the number of disks you've got and the larger the capacity of those disks, the longer this is likely to take. And that's it, it's now complete, as you can see. So if we click on HDD Management, we can see information about the disk, the disk size, its current temperature, etc, etc. So, uh, that's pretty cool. We can close that down now. That's pretty much the initial configuration. Um, so we'll stop this one here. 
and we'll do another quick one sh um, straight after this that shows you some of the features of this station manager. Keep watching using windowshomeserver.com. <laughs> 